Hey YouTube, it's Alan here and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going over the Shadow War event that also takes place in issue number 8 of Deathstroke Incorporated. Now, with that said, before I get started, if you don't mind hitting that subscribe button as well as turning on notifications so you never miss out on any content I have coming your way. And if you want some additional context on this story, you can check the description box down below as well as the pin card above to get all caught up with everything you need to know moving into this comic. So with that said, let's dive right into the story. So this issue right here opens up on a really, really cool panel. It opens up on a picture of Angel Breaker standing over a defeated Raptor. And the purpose of this panel is to show us just how much power the League of Assassins has over the villain industry and how they are able to take out almost every member of Deathstroke Incorporated basically showing us just how one-sided this fight really is because the League of Assassins is wildly powerful and wildly capable. And that's even more evident in the following page because we see how each panel of this double spread shows us how each member of Deathstroke Incorporated is taken down slowly one by one by the League of Assassins, which eventually leads us to San Francisco. Now, the reason why we are here is because Deathstroke in respawn after the explosion went into hiding. And one of the places they traveled to was to San Francisco because Deathstroke was able to set up this underground bunker beneath the city in case he was ever to run into the Teen Titans again. Because we all know Deathstroke has a long standing history with the Teen Titans. Now, once we get in this bunker, we see just how well equipped he really is. We see all kinds of weapons all over the place. We see refrigerator that was fully stocked of food and we see that he has lights, he has cameras, he has electricity, he has everything he needs to operate over an extended period of time. So, with the two safely tucked away, Deathstroke as well as Respawn took advantage of this opportunity to spend time with each other. Because due to the nature of Respawn's conception, Deathstroke pretty much has no idea who he really is. But despite all the good times the two were sharing, Deathstroke still has some business to attend to and that was mounting a retaliation against the League of Assassins. Because he tells his prodigy, he tells his son, he tells Respawn that he cannot call himself the King of Supervillains if he immediately goes into hiding after the very first sign of trouble. And on top of that, he goes on to say that he believes that Taya Al Ghul could be responsible for assassinating her own father, which was the same thing Batman believed in the previous issue before he spoke to Taya Al Ghul himself. So with that said, we segue over to Batman and Talia and we pick back up with them while they're still embraced in their kiss. Now, with Talia being who she is, she quickly breaks away from Batman and try to blame it on a moment of weakness by saying maybe she lost more blood than she probably thought. So with that moment passed, Batman goes back to his original reason for coming here, which is to find out what exactly went down. So he asked Talia why the heck did Ra's al Ghul turn himself in to the DEL, in which she responds by saying her father would not share the information with her, but he was able to tell her that he was being rejected by the Lazarus of the Pit. And because of that, his mind was as clear as it has been in the last few centuries, which led him to want to share his information that he learned over the years with the entire world. Now this right here immediately threw some red flags up for Batman because Batman responds by saying, why would Ra's al Ghul reject the Lazarus of the Pit? In which Talia interrupts him by saying because of Damien. Because Damien was able to show Ra's al Ghul that his legacy can live far beyond himself. Which implies that Damien Wayne is the future of the League of Assassins. Now, with that stated, out of nowhere, Angel Breaker walks into the room with Raptor. Now, Raptor is completely beaten as we saw back in the very first page. So upon bringing him into the room, he brings up to Batman how his son Damien just participated in a death tournament, which caught Batman completely off guard. Now, because of this, Raptor quickly realized that he's just making everybody in this room dislike him even more, which could potentially work out really bad in his favor. So in an attempt to save his own butt, he tells Talia in front of Batman that sending her army of ninjas out there to kill people is not going to help her find Slade Wilson. Which was a pretty smart move because Batman quickly interjects by saying what is he talking about? Because we all know that Batman has a code against killing. 
So, with the Raptors successfully able to drive a wedge between Batman and Talia, he was able to turn the conversation away from him. Because Batman proceeds to tell Talia can he be the one responsible for interrogating the Raptor. In which Angel Breaker enters the conversation, and she says that Batman should not be the one responsible for doing this interrogation. Because Batman is a man of half measures, which means he does not have what it takes to go the extra mile. Because we all know, like we keep saying, Batman does not kill people. Now, those are fighting words, but those are also 100% true because Batman does not have the goal to do that. In fact, she goes a step further by saying she learned this information from Ghostmaker himself, which is a close friend of Batman and an awesome character in his own right. So with everything looking bad for Raptor, Batman decided to make a distraction and he does this by attacking Angel Breaker. Now, once he attacks her, he yells out for the Raptor to run away, in which he does. And once he was clearly away, Batman proceeds to follow behind him. Now, this pissed Angel Breaker off, because Angel Breaker immediately tries to pursue Batman, in which Talia al Ghul stops her, because she tells her why follow Batman if we can just follow Raptor, because Raptor can potentially lead us back to Deathstroke. So, speaking of Deathstroke, we actually skip over to him. Now, currently he is sitting down with his son bonding over a game of cards, which was kind of really eye-opening in a way, because he tells his father during his time with Ra's al Ghul, he was pretty much tortured the entire time while underneath his watch. Following that information, we move forward with the story, and what happens is their conversation that Deathstroke and Respawn was having was interrupted by Raptor. Raptor does this by calling him in the middle of their card game. Now, the reason for the call was that he was trying to warn Deathstroke about the League of Assassins, saying that Talia al Ghul was not playing games at all, and eventually, if they keep catching members of Deathstroke Incorporated, somebody, one of the members, is going to eventually betray them. Now, with that said, he ends the conversation by telling his boss to stay safe, which is pretty ironic, because right after communications were severed, the lights goes out, and out of nowhere, the secret door opens up. Now, once that door opens up, two figures appear, and one of those silhouetted figures proceed to attack Respawn and completely takes him out. So, who are these two figures? Yes, if you guess Damien the Ravager, you are 100% correct, because in the very last panel, we see those two standing ready to fight in the doorway. Now, to me, this is a really good cliffhanger as this issue comes to an end, because this shows us that Ravager and Damien is also not playing games at all. And this fight in the coming issue should be something good.